Welcome to Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer. I'm your host, Kim Todd. On Digging Deeper, we have in-depth discussions with our extension experts about those important landscape topics. Tonight, we're going to be focusing on some of our four-legged, maybe not friends, that like to dig deeper and ruin those ornamentals. Thank you for joining us once again for Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer. You know, we are always happy to talk to Dennis about critters and the damage they do, and he always has a way of either endearing them to us or at least telling us a funny story. So Dennis, tonight we're going to talk about moles, voles, maybe some trolls and some other burrowing creatures that like to eat our garden plants. And you brought an array oh, of yeah. friends. I brought a bunch of stuff, burrowing rodents and some rel relatives. Um, and these are, you know, they've been dead for a while. They're stuffed differently. This one is with oysters. This one's with uh, chestnuts. But, you know, <laughs> so if you do want to eat them later, you can. So all these are pretty much burrowing in the lawn and they can, or any part of the acreage. Um, and I'll talk about each one of them and then the type of signs that they leave because knowing what is causing the problem will help you manage it because you have to know your enemy to defeat your enemy. If you don't know your enemy, you're going to lose. Well, and what we do get from our viewers is what's this hole right. from a distance and yeah. yes, you're really good, but sometimes it's right. like... It's, it's tough because... Most of these animals, they're either staying underground, what we call fossorial, or they're nocturnal. They're out at night when we're sleeping or, you know, tucked away someplace or I, I could say out in a bar, but no one's doing that anymore. Um, <laughs> so, but that's when they're in your lawn. So the first one, which is a big problem in a lot of counties in Nebraska, but in some counties don't have as many. And this is the Eastern Mole with an M. Okay, this is a insectivore that eats worms primarily and insects. It will not eat any tubers, it will eat no roots, nothing like that. And it's going to dig and notice its front paws. Okay, they're made for swimming through the soil. Hence its scientific name is Scaphiophis aquaticus. Because at first they thought they lived in the water because they have kind of fins for the front appendages. They do have eyes, but they can't see very well, but they don't need to see. They're always underground, and they're usually fairly deep, burrowing, looking for earthworms. Not grubs, not a lot of other things. They're primarily an earthworm feeder, the eastern mole. When they're looking for them, sometimes they'll come under the turf, and so they'll rip the roots of the turf, and that could cause those roots not to suck up water and nutrients, and you get dead turf. So they're not eating the roots, they're just r ripping them. And they're doing that to look for food primarily. Sometimes in the spring, um, the males are going all over just under the turf trying to scent out females. And so then there's not the fact that they're hungry, they're after the females more than the earthworms, but that's just a short time of the year. Um, the other thing about them is that they try to stay underground. And when they cause a mound, the mound has no hole in it, and the mound is chunky because they push the dirt up with their head, okay? And so when they push their dirt up with their head, that causes a chunky mound that's about a foot in diameter and less than six inches high, okay? The next one I'm gonna talk about, and that's a mole, okay? Okay, so you can't poison it, you have to trap it, or you can use a, uh, earthworm poison that's on the market by several names. Talperid is the professional one, the exacting same product. It's sold to uh, in retail by the name Tomcat for moles. There's only one company that makes that, that's Bell Labs, and it's a special toxicant just for moles. And just in case you're wondering, it's distasteful to birds. So birds will spit out this gummy worm that you have to put down in the soil without touching it. And it's also distasteful if a child grabbed it. It has what we call bitrin in it. If a child grabbed it and put it in their mouth, they would actually vomit it right up. So it's fairly safe for nature and people. And that's probably one of the best ways to get rid of that guy. Next one is the vole. 
With a V. With a V, <laughs> like Victor, okay? <laughs> this one's a granivore. It loves seed material, but it also eats, takes chunks out of bulbs. Won't take the whole bulb and pull it down, but it'll take bites out of bulbs. It loves bird seed, so in the winter, it's under the snow where you feed the birds, okay? This one's a little flatter because I think I had it in my pocket. Normally they're rounder, okay? <laughs> Short tail, can't really see their eyes. This one doesn't have any eyes, but their ears don't pop up either. Now these leave an open hole about an inch in diameter, and a lot of them, okay? And they leave a run on the surface, not under the surface where they're ripping roots. They're kind of nubbing the grass down to the crown and following a trail in between their holes. It looks all, like a slip and slide. Yeah, right, like a slip and slide. And the other thing about these guys, if you follow those trails, there's one trail that doesn't go to a hole, it goes to an area where they defecate. They have a common latrine, kind of like us. <laughs> Pretty smart, okay? You don't want to go in your house, so you have your common outhouse. Um, the other thing about them is that they're very nocturnal and their population changes. It can go from 25 per acre to 250 per acre and then crash. They're what we call a microteen rodent. Um, so another kind of famous microteen rodent would be lemons. You know, it used to be that myth that they all would run off a cliff and no, they just <laughs> cycle. <laughs> no animals are gonna run off a cliff. Well, Come they on. might if you're chasing them. Not even that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, probably one of the easiest ways to get these guys is the box trap, okay? You, don't, you just put a little bit of seed around it. You can wind it up, and there's several different brands of these. And right where that run is, near a hole, you just nestle it in the grass. And they run in there to hide. And if I put it in the right place, I don't get one of these flipped into this chamber over here. I get four or five per night, because they follow each other. It looks like a music box. Yeah, you, you, like, it holds up to 15 of them. <laughs> ding, 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 come on, voles. Okay. Another way, if you didn't want to use that, you can use a snap trap. And let's see if I have a snap trap available. Yeah. Okay, and the snap trap, you always would put perpendicular to the run. So if the run is right here, okay, you would put it perpendicular so that snaps towards it. So this one's not set. Now it's set, okay? So we gotta go this way. We want to set it away from the run. And you would put a little bit of molasses with rolled oats or bird seed right here on this thing. And then it, it, the run would be across here. So this is perpendicular to the run. It would come over there with its head and go to get that little piece of bait. And then when it touched that, I'm not gonna do my fingers again. <laughs> <laughs> and then it would snap trap it. Okay, so another way you can use it. So the vole and the mouse, probably, or what are the ones that people mix up the most? Um, it's hard to say. Lots of times they, they mix up the signs of the mole and vole. Mole and vole, yeah. But they mix up, when they see the actual animal, the vole and the deer mouse, mm -hmm. which has a long tail, kind of a white underbelly. And these guys run up trees and these guys have a hole usually along a foundation and they don't leave any runs. They eat grains and these are the guys that'll burrow into your um, lawn furniture, cushions, mm -hmm. into your RVs. They'll make nests in your garages. In the grill. In the grill, mm -hmm. all sorts of things like that. Yeah. And now these guys are the only one that we have indicated in Nebraska that can carry hantavirus in their droppings. Um, so if you do think you have a nest of any kind, it's probably these guys, you know, a nest above ground from a mouse. And don't assume it's a house mouse, assume it's these guys, the perimiscus, and wear a mask and clean it up wet. Okay, hmm. so everybody's wearing a mask nowadays, but always wear a mask and we always did. So um, when we handle these guys, these guys can easily be captured in the snap trap the same way. And they would snap them. They don't go into this thing as readily. They're more of the snap trap guy. Okay. And so this is the deer, deer mouse or whitefoot mouse. Okay. 
you won't be able to tell the difference between the two. Okay. So that, but that's different from the house mouse. Yes. Okay. House mouse are only live around homes. They were brought here, we think, maybe with Christopher Columbus. Wow. You know, as far on his boats, but then they came completely after. So the house mouse is European, okay? Yeah. And it brings our diseases, and it brings, same thing with the Norway rat. So those, they want to live by people. These guys will adjust to living with us because we take over their habitat, but they also are very prominent in the middle of a farm, mm -hmm. okay? Whereas a house mouse wouldn't. The house mouse is usually around the farmstead or the grain elevator. Okay. Okay. All right, so then we have... Next one we'll go with the 13 line ground <laughs> squirrel, okay? This one is longer, thinner, and this one has a true hibernation, and it is diurnal. These three guys are nocturnal. This one digs a hole about an inch and a half to two inches in diameter. See? Okay? A nice clean hole. No dirt around it, no tunnel around it, no ridge around it, just a nice clean hole. And it only has two holes 20 foot apart with an area underneath that it nests in, about the size of a small football, okay? So, so what these guys do is they grab that dirt and they kind of spread it around so you don't know. And these guys like short grass. So these animals like the taller grass and like it where it's moist. These guys like the short grass. They love a golf course, okay? <laughs> uh, especially the rough. And the nice part is, I think it's cool because I'm not a golfer, tell rock that. that <laughs> The size of their hole is perfect for a, for golf, a golf ball, ball. to get stuck in. Mm -hmm. yeah, they know that. They could spend hours looking for that right. ball so and they don't have to take the penalty right. shot. <laughs> okay. These guys eat grain. They love sunflower seeds and things like that. And they'll eat any dry grain in the yard. They also eat dandelions. Hmm. So you may think that's good or bad. It depends on if you make dandelion wine. In the spring, they're notorious to do something. You plant your corn, your sweet corn, or your beans in a row. They'll go right as it's just starting to pop up, or right before it pops up, and go right down the row and eat the corn seed. Okay? And then you have to replant. Okay? And so these guys are notorious to do that. So they don't pull it from below. You can see little marks on top, and they go right down the row of seeds. And they'll do that. They'll also chew into cubids, like pumpkins or mm -hmm. things like that. But the voles can, will also ch chew into those cubids as, as well. These guys are fairly easy to catch by pouring water down one hole and having a trap on the other hole. And you can have the trap so they run up in it and then they can't get back out, the one-way door type traps. You can make those with hardware cloth. All you do is you cut it so it's one foot uh, by this is, I think, probably looks like two and a half foot, two, 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 two and a half. And you square it off so it's two inches by two inches by two inches by two inches, or four inches by four inches by four inches to get a foot. And then have a door, and it goes up, and it goes in there. And we have a neb guy that tells you how to build this for cool. these guys. And you pour water down the hole, and they'll run in. These guys also go up drain pipes, and so okay. they're notorious for that. And they hibernate, so they're not around in the winter. And they come out during the day, so you see them during the day. All right. Okay. Next is the pocket gopher. This is a bigger guy. Yeah. These guys make big mounds. No open holes, but the mounds of dirt are fine dirt, fan-shaped. And those mounds of dirt could be this big around. Wow. Easily almost a meter in, in diameter, or three foot in diameter. And could be over a foot high. So... Don't make a molehill out of gopher mine. Remember, <laughs> molehill, less than a foot, chunky, fine, more than a foot, okay? <laughs> these guys are herbivores. See how these claws, that's for digging. And they put their teeth behind these pockets so they eat roots. And these guys love roots. So if you have bulbs being taken, especially from below, or iris bulbs, it's probably these guys. Hmm. Never the mole. Possibly if it bites the vole, but these guys. These guys are also notorious for taking the roots, because they're vascular, of trees in the winter. Let's see, sorry. Yeah. This was someone's apple tree. Yeah. This, all this root mass was trimmed by a vole one winter. 
pocket gopher. A pocket gopher. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. That keep me straight. So, <laughs> my grandkids love me. Uh, so does so does our audience usually. Yeah. I don't use stuffed animals. Well, I do, but they're they used to be alive. <laughs> but you can see all the root matter is taken off. And of course, what happened? They did this in the winter underneath because this gentleman happened to have a big mulch bed around his apple trees. Mm -hmm. And after three years, they were just about the right caliper that they start bearing. And what happened when the ground thawed? Bonk, bonk, mm -hmm. bonk, because there was no roots left. Yeah, nasty creatures. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say that. Nasty creatures. Okay. All right, and we have one more. I think we have time for one more. Okay, this other one, I just put along because some people find this in their traps. This is a shrew. This guy eats these two guys. It's what? smaller, it goes right for their neck, kills them, and devours them. <laughs> this guy's metabolism, if he doesn't eat his, twice his body weight in 24 hours, he dies. Seriously. Right. And so it doesn't make any of its own holes, it takes over the holes of these guys. And, and it goes right up to the vole, grabs its neck, chews into its neck. It has a little bit of venom. I've never can feel it. I've had them bite me, but they have purple teeth. This one doesn't because it doesn't have a skull. Um, and then, so these guys are kind of long, but if you sometimes have a snap trap, you may get these very fine fur, extremely fine. You want to feel that? If you can get a thousand of these, imagine the coat you can get or the gloves. Beautiful. You have to skin all thousand of them. <laughs> um, so again, these are, the good guys, yeah, because they're killing these, and actually they will kill a mold. Wow! Do you see those very often? Because we don't get a lot of questions about um, truth. I see them out in nature. Yeah. I don't see them as much around homes. Yeah. Um, but um, so this is one you don't want to worry about. But you couldn't accidentally catch them in a trap, and if you use this trap to get the voles, you may get this one. Oh, there's trapped voles in there. Dinner time buffet, oh and then goodness. it's trapped. <laughs> And then you've taken care of everybody except the giant ones. Yeah, it's pretty messy because you, usually when I've done that, you have two or three, two or three voles that are all, you know, <laughs> pretty much devoured or chewed up. And the, here's the, you know, happy no, shrew no, with a no, blood around his no, mouth going. Nope. Hee. nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's nature. nature. It's a pageantry yeah, in nature. It happens every day. It's supposed to happen, and it will always happen. <laughs> so we do see occasionally. Um, abandoned dead creatures, usually probably the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. Would those have been captured by a fox or a bird and, yeah. and simply dropped or what's going well, on? Well, most of these are prey to fox, yeah. coyotes, um, and snakes if you're out, you know, bull snakes, big right. snakes, not garter right. snakes. Um, the, but it, usually if a animal such as a fox or mm -hmm. something like that, uh, or a bird of prey takes these, they did a lot of work. They're gonna mm -hmm. tear it apart and eat as much as they can. When you find carcasses, especially the heads bit off or part of the carcass, it's usually cats or feral cats okay. or domesticated dogs. That have... Because uh, you know, a fox or a, a coyote, this is, might be their only meal that day right. or for days. So if, unless they're disrupted, they're going to just they're going to grab right, down. right they're going to yeah. eat the whole thing and and uh, you know a coyote can easily swallow in a couple of chews swallow these down and a couple yeah. badgers love these hmm. badgers favorite food is the in this part of the state it's kangaroo rats in the western part of the state but in this part of the state badgers love these and bull snakes love these they go down burrowing after them and eat them wow so do you see pocket gophers very often in urban areas yes really oh yeah um, I remember when I was working at big. the Douglas County Extension Office on 80th mm -hmm. and Center in Omaha. Mm -hmm. There was a field behind there before they built assistant living. I caught literally dozens of pocket gophers out of that wow. field. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they're indiscriminate in terms of. Well, they were stuck there. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. you have a half acre or so where they yeah. have, they can find food. And, and the thing is, lots of times if it's a cover crop or just a, a couple acres of alfalfa, that's one of their favorite foods. Really? And so if someone puts an acre or two of alfalfa near a suburbanized area, it'll bring them right in. the pocket gophers. Yeah. Wow. Well, they don't eat turf. It has to be something that has a tuber 
something that's need. really an under, a, like more tulips. of a structure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like your bulbs in your garden. Right. Exactly. Right. Well, always fun to have Dennis on air, and we want to make sure that you pay attention to us on Facebook. We will uh, always be airing right after the real show, 8 o'clock on Thursday nights. And of course, we want your comments. We want you to, to tell us whether these are the kinds of subjects that you love to hear us talk about a little bit more in depth than those three minutes or those questions that we get to have answered on Backyard Farmer. And that really is all the time we do have for digging deeper with Backyard Farmer. We want to say thanks, of course, to Dennis for helping us understand these critters. And we didn't get too many jokes tonight. We'll look forward to that next time around. We will be back next week with another discussion about gardening topics that matter to you. Do be sure to watch Backyard Farmer live every Thursday, 7 Central, on NET. Thanks for digging deeper with Backyard Farmer.